What are you doing over there, Scooby? He's over there watching something. Yeah. Okay, I've been studying the oil system here a little bit, trying to figure this stuff out. So, basically, this is a bypass here that's, I'm assuming, letting stop in some kind of a vacuum lock. That'd be my guess. I'm not sure. So, anyway, I don't really see why it's really needed, but it's in there. This scaler here goes to your, uh, your blow-off valve. It dumps everything in the crankcase. So, I, uh, I don't know why you're bypassing some of your oil flow to your crank into the bypass system. So, I'm sure there's a reason for it. I just don't know why. So basically this oil hole here feeds the uh, chain oiler. And this chain oiler is not, like a big twin, you got engine breather and chain oiler mix. You put oil into the breather system, blows all over the chain. This one doesn't do that, this just drips. So it's in the breather, it's in the crankcase pressure here. Because you're inside the crankcase pressure here. This hole, these are connected, that hole goes over into here. So it comes through the oil pump pressure which feeds oil into this gallery here once it goes past that tapered screw which we had buried over here someplace so it basically drips oil into the line that goes across and whatever little crankcase pressure you, get, you build up inside your crank cam cover area here your gear gear case pressure automatically blows through out of here so you're always breathing through this tube into your into your uh, primary this one over here takes up whatever's left over, which is your breather system. It goes past the generator gear here, which seals against that and has a slinger in it. And that's supposed to separate the oil from the air. And then it just dumps out here onto the ground. That's how that system works. So that hole we blew out in here was the feed gallery. That comes right through here, over here to this hole. This is the hole that feeds the motor. This here is your pressure gallery, it goes down like that. So you have the vane system in here, it goes through that little slot up there, pressurizes this groove here. You have two holes here that feeds through, right here. It feeds through those two holes, those big holes there, and both of those line up on top of this gallery right here that goes around. So this is a pressure feed gallery, it goes all the way down. Here's your pressure switch right here, direct feed off the pump, just like it should be. Okay, then it goes through your oil pump here. It goes into this hole right here. This is your anti-sump valve ball. So if you have a wet sumping problems on a flathead bike, this is the ball you need to fix. Not these other ones, this one. Okay, this here is your pressure relief valve for the oil pump. So what you're doing is you're building up pressure inside your motor through this hole right here. Oop. You come, damn gasket somewhere. You're coming through this gallery right here. You're going through this hole here, blow off this and come out this. And that's what controls your pressure. So this whole passage from your crank, all this is inside of this hole 100% of the time. So it has to build up enough pressure to overcome this ball here and then overcome the big ball up here. This ball's only got a couple pounds on it, no big deal. This is the one that does it is right here so now the wet sumping do your fitting so theoretically if you have oil coming through here into your pump goes through the veins down through here let's do that over here out of here past the pressure valve that we're not using into the crank and goes around so that bypasses the the check valve and that's why it goes into the crank fills your crank up so this valve doesn't work as far as I can tell, it's a direct feed off the oil line. So I think it bypasses everything. Because that hole there lines up with that hole right there. And that feeds this one. What lines up with this hole? See, it goes right to your gallery. Goes right to there. 
No, we're over here, the next one over. Oh, okay, it does have to go through the bowl. Okay, yeah, it does. Yeah, it wouldn't work if you had to. Okay, this hole here lines up with the second hole here. So the ball seats in between these two holes here. So, yeah, that stops the wet something if this were, which they usually don't. Okay, so that lets, that takes only a couple pounds to pop the pressure. The oil pump goes up. It starts pressurizing your crank right here. Whatever leftover pressure you got pops this valve open here, goes on up, and then it goes into this cavity here, which goes right into your breather system, which goes through the cam cover and out inside the case and dumps it oil right into the case. That's what it does. That'll be this one over here. That's this hole right here. That's also the pressure that feeds the fitting that goes over the can over here. So whatever leftover pressure you got goes up. It blows out to here, and whatever doesn't blow out here goes through this. So it might. I'm not sure which gallery hits first, but anyway, all of these are connected anyway. Right now, when you have no screw in there, they're connected. I have to figure out more, but it doesn't matter. It's on the secondary side of everything, so it doesn't really make any difference. So basically, on a 45, the pressure builds up overall, and the check valve, all it does is control how much goes in the blow-off system, not how much goes to the crank. The crank takes 100% of the flow. If you have any buildup, then it goes into the, in the crankcase and dumps it. So it's kind of different from a big twin, but similar things. It has to pressurize everything. So when you put an end oil or crank in this thing, which means you eliminate the hole on the end of it here. So instead of feeding through this hole, every, one, every turn this hole lines up. If you go directly and you bypass, go right into here, it will dump all the oil right into your crankcase. The crank takes everything you got, because it just spins around, it's like a centrifuge, it just sucks the oil out. You know, it goes, it goes through the rod, but it sucks everything. It puts a hell of a vacuum on the whole system. So it'll suck every drop of that motor will make, will go into that crank. Now on a 45, that's no big deal, because there's no top end to lubricate. So that really doesn't affect us any. You just, you'll never have any pressure. What happens is it'll, it'll over volume, it'll probably over volume the whole motor, and it'll start wet something at high RPM, would be my guess. But it depends on how much volume this small pump will put out. You know, I think that thing will overdo this one. But, you know, it's hard to tell. Now, we're putting a heavy-duty four-vane in here, which is going to put a lot more volume into the motor. And But we're not doing anything about this side here, so hopefully it's not an issue sucking it back out at high RPM. Find out, I guess. So, like I said, if you made that a 360 oil system, I don't see why it really makes any difference, because all the volume is going to go into the motor anyway how much are you going to slow the volume down by just pressurizing this right here I guess to a certain extent you'll press you'll slow the volume down because it'll build up a head of pressure in the pump and it just sucks up you know just it's got pressure ahead there that doesn't need to go anywhere if you had this unrestricted and let the flow go right into this crank it would it wouldn't have any pressure in this motor I doubt if it shut that idiot light off it would just suck everything that thing had so whatever that pump makes will go into the crankcase, and this would have to suck up 100% of that volume back to your oil tank, or you'd have to have a wet something problem. So that's the problem you run into. So I'm thinking open it up, but put a real, uh, check screw in here. So you put like a 30 thou hole in here, or maybe a 45 thou hole, maybe max, inside of this plug. That'll restrict the oil flow. It'll give you a full-time oil system to crank, which theoretically is better, but... Who knows? And that'd probably work a little bit better, but that's questionable at best. Now, if you're going to do stuff like that, you're going to have to plug up this hole over here. Right here. Because that hole, its job is to, when you have pressure on the inside of that, it blows it out here. Because you're not supposed to have pressure on the back side of the, of the shaft here. You're supposed to have none. So you would have to plug that hole up there when you do that. Otherwise, all that pressure, you're, all the volume you're putting through, just blows right out of here. Doesn't do anything. Once again, you'll have no oil pressure. Yeah. Anyway, those are all things to play with if you want to. I don't know. I might run 
the stock system works. It's not a major issue. Yeah, that's something you'd have to play with and see and if there's any change in the quality of the crank pin bearings failing or not failing. Yeah, I don't know. You would think more oil pressure is better, but in the real world, it doesn't really need it. It's a splash lubricated system anyway, so it doesn't really care. Roller bearings don't need a lot of pressure. They just need some volume. They don't, they don't need any pressure at all. They just need some volume. And they don't need a lot of volume, just a little bit. So It's all toss-ups. You sleeping over there? I put Scooby to sleep. Yeah. So Anyway, that's how the oil system works on the 45, as far as I can tell. So, like I said, I'm just going to put it back stock. I'm not going to screw around with it. I'm going to put the set screw back into the crank, and which is, should be laying right here for them. That's why I always put them up here where I can find them. We'll plug that hole up, and we're not going to worry about it. All right, so that's how that works. Now, the having the gallery in between here, bypass and the check valve in here. The only thing I see that accomplishing is, is that you are, maybe there's some kind of a vacuum lock happening in here somehow. It's going to put oil into your primary chain system a little bit. So, at, like I said, if you had a bad, if you had very low oil pressure and you never did pop this valve in here, then you would never have any oil to your primary chain. So, coming out of this tube. So, maybe they're doing this so you'll get oil into that system and it'll actually lubricate the primary chain. I can't think of any other reason you would need it. Because this is on the output side, it's not on the input side. So it's not like you're controlling any other flow at all. So it's just, I'm having a limited idea why they did that. But I'm assuming Harley probably went to this later and uh, they did a lot of changes in around 51 and 2, 3. On the trike stuff, they started playing on this stuff. They also, up in 59, they did some holes in the lifter blocks up in here and started playing around different crankcase stuff they're doing, stuff they're all learning from the K models they were doing in that too. So that's all in your mid, early to mid 50s, they're playing around a lot and up in the later 50s. So anyway, they're screwing around a lot. So I'm, I'm guessing they did this back in that time frame and you know, maybe that helped things, I don't know. I know one of the trick is on the lifter blocks and the later motor, they have a, a hole in these that goes into the crankcase. So the crankcase pressure actually lubes the top of your lifter and bypasses. Right now the, the valves get lubricated by going through the lifter. Whatever splashes past the lifter gets on the valve, otherwise it gets nothing. So on the later bikes they put an oil gallery in here, it kind of bypasses it coming from the crankcase side. And like I said, they were playing around this stuff on the K models. So anyway, they... They're getting more oil to your valve train. I think that's what they're accomplishing. In the real world, this thing doesn't need hardly any oil at all to it. That's why I don't put valve seals on these flat ends because whatever gets there, it's highly, highly regulated already. It's lucky to even have anything to them. So over oiling is not an issue. So, all right, well, that's about where we're at on that. So let me get this cleaned up and we'll get the crank going together.